Welcome in to another episode of Bourbon South. Chase Parm, Steve Thomason. Today, joining us, my good friend Leslie Walkington. You have heard her before on MPW Digital and on the network, Velvet Ditch Coffee here in Oxford. We're going to do something a little different today. Obviously, a bourbon podcast, Bourbon South, but it's bourbon, it's coffee, new tastings for both of them. Leslie and I have talked about tastings and the similarities, the differences. Steve's already got his cup poured. The, bur- the bourbon is very close to him over here. He's hanging out close to the uh, of the bourbon. So we're going to go coffee. We're going to go bourbon. We're going to go coffee, bourbon, talk about the differences in palettes and notes and uh, kind of test those out for you guys today. This is a really good episode that if you're listening in podcast form, go to the video. You'll be able to see a lot more stuff. You'll be able to see some of the things that we're doing. So we're going to we're going to make it enjoyable from a podcast standpoint, but always a little better in video when we're tasting and trying and checking out some of these uh, these different things here. So, Leslie, thanks for the time today. Really appreciate you joining me again. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, joining us again. I, I guess first, and we're going to get into the tastings and whatnot, but for people who, I'd love for you to just turn this off, go listen to that one, get the background and come back. But for anyone who's not going to do that, is being a little lazy about it. What, why, why coffee? Why Velvet Dish? How did you sort of get into this? Well, I'm a coffee addict. I love my coffee and I do love my bourbon. <laughs> Just two good things right two, there. Two very good things. So yeah, my brother introduced me to a specialty coffee many, many years ago, um, a coffee from California. And so I started drinking that coffee and I could not find anything that I liked as, as well here in the South. And so I decided I'm going to learn to roast and find some really good beans, and then I'll share it with family and friends, and it kind of turned into a larger venture. So two years ago, I started Velvet Ditch Coffee to share this wonderful coffee that I think is as special as our small town. What was your first single origin coffee? Where did it start, and kind of how many do you have available now at this point? At this point, I have seven different offerings in my family, and I have more on the shelf that I just haven't released yet. And I have some special ones coming up. I have my bourbon beans right now, um, seasoning my, well, they're Guatemalan beans that I season in my Blanton's bourbon barrel. So that one hopefully we'll talk about in about a month when it's ready to debut. But probably my first coffee that I ever had that was single origin was from Guatemala. And so that's continues to be my favorite single origin coffee. And is it very similar to the one we're having here today? That is um, one of our first offering is from yeah. Guatemala. Well, I don't remember exactly what the flavor notes were. I know one flavor note was chocolate. And so this Guatemala from Wee Wee Tenango, it also has chocolate in there. And so I tend to pick single origin beans that have a lot of chocolate. This one has macadamia, chocolate, dried fruit. So it's this beautiful bouquet of flavors that come out in the cup. Is that something where they will be somewhat similar because of soil and climate and different things? I mean, what is it? We, we talk about bourbon all the time and the barrels mm-hmm. and the temperatures and placements. What is it about coffee that's going to give them the flavor with wherever it's located or grown? Right. So coffee, uh, specialty coffee is what I deal with. And sure. that's the only thing that I purchase. So so it has to do with the elevation of how the plant, how high they grow that plant. And so it also has to do with the rain, the terroir, the sunshine, the soil content. All of that affects and infuses the flavor. So it's not that I'm putting chocolate or macadamia or dried fruit flavorings into the coffee. It's completely natural. Steve, the- you've been all over. Maybe the answer is no, but have you noticed coffee in another certain country you've been in? Or no. has there been one or two that, that sticks out to you? Absolutely. Uh, traveling, you, you get different coffees everywhere. Mm. Uh, in fact, I have to always bring back uh, a bag for my oldest son, Caleb. He's uh, he's a big coffee drinker. He likes to drink it even darker than me. I'm trying to think. I know I've had two or three places that I really enjoyed. I think Tanzania. I think I got a good mm-hmm. coffee out okay. of there. Uh, and then somewhere in the Middle East, but that would have been imported into the Middle East. I'll have to think about it for mm-hmm. a minute. I haven't traveled to South America or Central America work-wise much and i know that would be coffee heaven right there i'm sure yeah coffee belt today we're doing guatemalan first we're going to come back with a kenyan offering we'll talk about here in a little bit and then steve why don't you introduce the uh, the bourbons for today to our people as well so uh we're going to do a couple of good ones first one is a barrel pick that just came into high cotton actually yesterday i believe because aaron called and said hey come up and help with the taste that would be october 2nd for anybody from a from a debut standpoint so (laughs) thank you sir i forget about that uh anyway just came in and it's a it's a barrel pig and i did not get to go on it i was gone and it uh i tried it 
tried it and it's uh, very good. It's a five and a half year. Drinks older. Uh, and I'm interested to see what y'all think of the proof of it. Not going to tell you the proof. I want y'all to tell me the proof, but mm, that'll be our fine. first one. That'll be and fine. then we'll finish up with a little dessert. My favorite dessert bourbon, Widow Jane Decadence, finished in uh, maple barrels. Yes. Ooh, that's really, delicious. really good. Yummy. That Very is one so. that uh, we, we tried actually with a dessert at St. Leo a couple months ago as well. Yeah. They had a, yeah. a, a tasting thing, so we had that there. But I, I actually have not had it by itself. So, this yeah. will be. You know, Chase, you were talking about the, the travel and the coffee. The biggest thing I deal with is, even in Europe, but especially in African places, mm -hmm. you know, you can be staying sometimes at a very nice hotel and they don't have coffee makers in the room or it's instant coffee, uh, which is very... That does happen. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, a lot, a yeah. lot. And But oh. you can find some that are good and you just you kind of work through it. Uh, I've been a couple of places where I thought it was terrible. Oh, I know... Uh, was in Nairobi and had some good coffee there. Mm. I remember that uh, in, in Kenya. Uh, but that's the main thing about a lot of times is you want to have a, you know, just a regular, you know, we're Americans, we're spoiled. We want our coffee maker so I can make a big pot of coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times you have to do the little instant packets, but you know, sometimes they're pretty good. I was surprised when I was in Athens, Greece, that that's what they were serving us were the instant packets. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was like, oh, it's so good. And it was so rich and thick. And then I saw over there, it was instant. And I was like, how, like, how did we not know this? You know, but because you're in a different mm -hmm. environment, you think it's something special. <laughs> so from a process standpoint, when this was grown to now, what is kind of, what, what is the quick timeline of how we get from one place to the other for a single origin coffee? Oh boy, the quick timeline. Yeah, just be, be you know, somewhat Cliff Notes version of that one. So from the time it's grown? Either way, whatever you want to answer. Um, well... Gosh, it depends on the age of the original plant. Okay. Um, so from the time this drops, let's say if this actually was harvested in December, then that plant, they're going to harvest it several times. They're going to go through and they're going to pick the perfectly ripe cherries, maybe go through four or five times. And then they'll process that. And then by the time I get it, probably um, two months, a month and a half, maybe two months depending on transportation depending on the boats basically and then from that point for you to actually get it out in in process oh, well for me to get it out i'm sitting there waiting i'm watching the boat coming across yeah, yeah. and i'm making the phone call saying is it here is it here and then as soon as it drops then i can get the beans mm -hmm. and so the other thing is you know these green coffee beans from guatemala i mean they're still going to be good a year down the road if i don't use them all which i do but they would still be good because I keep all of my green coffee beans in climate controlled environments. So, yeah. So in fact, I had some Ethiopia beans one time and they were even better a year later really? because it's almost like they're sitting there seasoning and they're climate controlled. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then after you roast it for me, I think it's better a month down the road. Okay. Let's give it a shot. So this is the, uh, I've had it. We'll try it again. The Guatemala and uh, single origin here. As you're on the podcast, we get a little quiet for a minute. So again, it's like bourbon that you want to let it saturate your tongue. And as it cools, you're going to taste more flavor notes in the coffee. And then maybe the second, the third tasting, you're going to taste more flavor notes. And I will not. And just like coffee, it has a nose. I mean, just like bourbon, it has a nose. It, it has, has a, a finish. Nose, it right. has everything right. that you would have in the much the same way. It's the life. aroma, just like the nose of the bourbon. And then the flavor notes, just like the bourbon. So, and then you've got that mouthfeel and the finish. Those are all the similar characteristics of both the coffee. I've got to be honest here. I have tried, I will order coffees and I'll look, you know, anytime I'm anywhere and ordering a coffee and I'll look at the tasting notes. I try to pick them up. I do not do as good a job on coffee as I do uh, on bourbon, but I think I understand why now because we were talking before we started. I'm that guy that wants his coffee hot. Right. I want it hot, hot, hot. Once it starts getting lukewarm, I just I don't enjoy it. And then, as you say, that's when you can really pick up the exactly. flavors and the notes. Yeah. And we can pour more in the cup right now if you want because it has gotten to be more room temperature. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, but you can you can taste more flavor notes as it hits room temperature. This is one for with me, and I, I don't remember the first time that I've tried it, and if, if maybe it's even changed over time, but the dried fruit for me is what comes out the most. I get a little mm -hmm. chocolate on the very front end, but it's it's a ton of dried fruit mm -hmm. is, is when I'm coming through this coffee. And, and I taste the macadamia. 
I taste that nutty. And if you if you put this next to my other Guatemala, because I have two Guatemalas because they're my favorite, mm -hmm. um, and the other Guatemala doesn't have a nut note in it. So you'll taste that difference too if you do a side by side. I get something on the end. I get a little bit, I, I pick up the nut on the end. Uh, and maybe that's it. Maybe it's, I, I was at first want to go citrusy, but it's not. Maybe it's the dried fruit uh, in there. I don't get chocolate out of this one. I've picked up chocolate before, I think, on a coffee. I'm not getting that, but it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good. I certainly enjoy that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a dried fruit that's, I think, got a little sweetness to it. I think maybe mm -hmm. if you're getting that chocolate mm -hmm. dried fruit, but it's sweetness. it's that almost like a, you know, a, a bar or like, you know, something like that where you get multiple things. I guess the, well, it'd be all of it. It'd be the nut and the dried fruit together. Right. Like, I almost feel like it's the coffee version of a really good granola bar with dried fruit kind yeah. of thing in it mm -hmm. where it's, it's pulling in a lot of those different flavors at once. And to me, the coffee and the, the chocolate in this is more of a 77% cacao type flavor. Um, it's not a milk chocolate, but it's more of a baker's cocoa chocolate. Mm -hmm. Which I think some people have to pick up because just people that order a bunch of different coffee drinks or whatever, they hear chocolate and think they're creating a concoction like right. at Starbucks right. or right. something where you're doing something different. And that's going to be sweet and sugary and milky mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So this is so, so far different is, is in how that operates and yeah. in, and works from that yeah. standpoint. Yeah, I know, I know it's pumpkin latte season right now. That's right. right. Oh that's the gosh. most popular syrup you know, out there. I have, uh, I can also say, I don't know that I've ever had one of those before. I'm I just, uh, pumpkin flavoring is like, not something that I'm just like the pumpkin. black coffee. And it's weird. We were talking. I don't like bitter. I hate IPAs. I mm -hmm. tend to not like bitter. But for my coffee, I just want it dark and, I guess, bitter to a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to pour the bourbon in a second. And I know, Steve, it's your favorite part of the show. You like hearing the pop and the whole deal we've got on here. We've got, a, 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 again, the, the Green River Barrel Pick. For this one, but Leslie, before we get to that, um, you and I were talking about this a couple, couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. From a palate standpoint, um, men, women, what people are picking up, because we, Steve and I talk a ton about how, you know, what you taste is what you smell, memories play a role, because that's how you actually know what the flavor is that you that's can right. identify at that point. Right. But what are, if there are any, any straight, in general, differences between a palate for a man versus a woman? Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, you've never asked me that question. Um, to my knowledge, okay, 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 now, yeah. Um, there are, I think, so women have can taste more flavor notes. We have that ability. I know that that's a scientific thing, article I've read about it somewhere, and I think that helps us taste and smell more flavor notes. I mean, that I, I didn't write that or say that. That's so you would pick up more yeah. things yeah. from it. You'd have more mm -hmm. variety. Yeah, we have a higher sense of smell and taste, according to the research. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy it. We'll but no, yeah, we haven't talked about that. That's interesting. I know a, a couple of stores uh, to where uh, there's a lady, you know, involved in that store and helps pick, and she, she's got right. a super palate, really, right. really good. Mm -hmm. Does a great job picking them. So when was this pick done, Steve? Maybe four or five months ago. I'm not sure. Like I said, I didn't get to go on it. I was really jealous I didn't get to go on it. Green River is really popping right now. They're putting out some really, really good stuff. And it's just going to keep getting better and better. I don't think the silence bothers anybody on the podcast. Right. They start <laughs> smelling and sipping. I think they know what they're getting. This is not the morning show. I see so the front and the bottom. Different. No, I don't want you to Single look. barrel. Oh, no, I didn't okay. look that close. Right. I just looked at single barrel. Because I'm trying to cheat on the I want to know what proof y'all have now, to I'm guess. I'm going to guess. I'm first so gonna, the nose. The nose, I'm going to enjoy that for a moment. But don't you say the number. Let me. No, I'm not guessing. Do you that. know the number? No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm, get, I'm getting the same notes that I got yesterday, of course, because that's in my head. But Is that when you tasted, tasted it this, the first time? Yes. That's hot. Okay, that's just my first. Hold on. Okay. And you like a lighter bourbon. You like a wheater, lower proof bourbon for the most part. I do, like under a hundred. Yeah. A hundred or less. But and I've I'm, tasted a and lot I'm of I'm one fifteen or more, so I'm very really? similar to that. I mean oh my gosh. it's hard to burn me out. Yeah. It's drinking a little hotter to me than it did Steve yesterday. Steve and I were hanging out at Wonderbird yesterday. She would not have preferred one of those little sips we took with some really high proof stuff. Oh my gosh! Yesterday, we had something that was one sixty. Oh it was one sixty. Yeah, 
Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, we're serious. Do you see how my voice just went down? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So one other thing about tasting, whether it's coffee or whether it's bourbon, it has to do with what did you eat for breakfast? What did you taste or eat like wow. 15 minutes before you pick up the cup? Whew. Okay. I need, where's my water? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go back in for a second sip. Chase, what are you thinking proof-wise? I'll get there in a minute. But the nose, I'll, I'll tell you, and I'm a little, so we talked about this. If you know the proof, you know what the tasting notes, you mm -hmm. want to repeat that sometimes because you already have mm -hmm. an idea. When I first got into the nose, I felt like it was had a pretty heavy alcohol nose to it, so I thought younger is where I would have mm -hmm. gone. It didn't feel like real complex, but as you drink it, there's more there. There's definitely stuff to it. You can, I think, and maybe this is completely me knowing, and I'm talking out both sides of my tail right here, and I'm lying, but I, because I'm crediting my palate in a way, I think I would have predicted younger bourbon that was a barrel pick because there was some mm -hmm. complexity to it. There was yeah. stuff where you went, okay, Ooh. that's not, that's not batch. That's not in the batch. That's something that's got some mm -hmm. stuff, but it does have that youthful sort of yeah. nose and, and, and on it. You're not going, hey, wow, that's a 15-year-old bourbon off the nose at all. No, right. I taste caramel. And I taste red hots. It's like I'm eating a red There hot. is a little cinnamon in that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the raw content, if there even is any in there or not. But there's there's like some cinnamon. cinnamon. There is... Um, How about you kind of throw out candy corn, caramel candy corn? Yeah. Caramel apple is what I had in my, in, in my head was caramel apple. I think there's even some, not not citrus, not overly sweet fruit, but like an apple or a pear or something along those lines. Well, that's that caramel it. flavor. That's yes. I got, actually, when we opened it yesterday, I got green apple on mm -hmm. the nose just for a second. Mm -hmm. And then later I didn't get it. Now I'm back to getting it a little bit. It's a really quality finish. It is a it, it's a finish off that kind of you that the youthfulness of that bourbon. So five years, four years, five years. I four, think it? it's a five and a half. Okay, mm. that's what it, it was. Um, that's a it's a it's a lingering complex finish that actually it's has something to lingering. it. I think, well, <laughs> we're I, burning her out of yeah. it. Yeah, and, and it's drinking it's drinking hotter than it did it yesterday. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Are your lips hot? For, no. Uh, but it is drinking hot. a little hotter than it did yesterday. Are so we now, guess the you, you also didn't do what Chase and I do, and that's, that's right. always have a little sip before we get started. Oh, just that's to, right. Just to it just wake acclimates the palate, the palate a little bit. Yeah, no, About so I, 30 minutes ago, they had a little sip. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, what do y'all think, proof-wise? Proof-wise? Okay, my first guess would be 115. All right. Okay, hold But on. now that I know that y'all also drink 160, this is a little bit of an aberration. Yeah. We took a sip of something that was 160. Yeah, yeah. It was, we would not have sat there. It wasn't and... a bottle being sold at 160. Okay. It was it was somewhere in the process of the gin making. There was something okay. that was 160. Yeah. So we, of course, right. were like, oh. We were try. trying to taste a certain flavor in something that was 160. It was, was that Meyer the lemon Meyer? Yeah, yeah, the, the Meyer lemon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, do y'all taste or smell cherry? I have not gotten cherry out of this one, but you know, it, it, it could be there. It's so sweet. So smell. that's showing us the women are pulling yeah. out well, the extra flavor so there. Sweet. You know, and I usually do get cherry in it's something so sweet. if there's cherry in it. This would be really good on vanilla ice cream. Yeah. I would have <laughs> said low 120s. That's where I would have gone with this. 121, yes, 122. Yesterday when we were trying it, we were saying 105 to 110. It, 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 it tastes hotter. It tastes that. a little hotter than that. It's 130. 130? 130. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a okay. really... Doesn't surprise me. That's a really great bottle, then, because you're getting some pretty good complexity out of something that hot and that young at that proof. And mm -hmm. I believe it's 59 bucks. Okay. At yeah. high cotton, as yeah, you said. Yeah, for a barrel pick, shoot. Uh, I'll say this. <laughs> I'm, I'm considering this is the, maybe the one that I get a case or two of for Christmas gifts. Oh, that's uh, it's idea. getting close to that time, and I always get Aaron's barrel picks for Christmas gifts. Uh, and this is one of them that's on the table for consideration. Especially for friends that like hot. Yeah. Is it is it too hot for you to grade it well? What do you sort of make of it if you were just happening upon this somewhere and, and, and having it? Oh, me? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm no, no, no. I know Steve's answer. Uh, I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking candy corn. Yes, I smell that candy corn. Yeah. Um, what was the question again? I mean, just how would you rate it? One to How'd ten. I rate it? Yeah, what do you got? Or is, is it just is, too hot for you, period, where you no, have a hard time No, I'm sitting here thinking, I would enjoy it with a cube. Give me one cube, and then 
I can drink that oh, all oh, night long. Yeah. Even can, at a one thirty. We can water it down. I mean, it's one thirty. That's really. Put a little water in. So yesterday, yesterday, one thirty. That's no problem. Because I love the flavor. Yesterday, I dropped a water in it. I did not enjoy it as much. But now it's been open for a day. You did know, it mellow it out? Hmm. Yeah. It, it definitely took the edge off, but I thought it also cost it some flavor. Now, you may not feel like that. Well, yeah, I mean, it takes a little bit of the impact away, mm -hmm. right? But I think an ice cube, then you can kind of like let it slowly dilute and enjoy it hotter and then more diluted. Because mm -hmm. the longer you drink it, you know... Chase, what do you think in school wise? I wish I had scored it before I knew anything. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that sometimes we've, we've, we've not messed up because it doesn't matter. It's our show, whatever we want. But from the standpoint of giving it the really accurate score, when you know exactly what goes into it, it can mm -hmm. lower or raise the score. Right. I mean, you know, if anybody was listening last week, we did the international bottles from Japan, and I was raving about the Four Roses and gave it this incredibly high score, but I gave it the really incredibly high score because of the availability and where it's from and right. the proof level and all the mm -hmm. things that I knew was going into it at that point. Um, it's like I said, as a barrel pick, I'm very impressed with it. I think it's very, very good. As you said, it's, it's a, it's a neat bottle because of the proof and the complexity and the age all wrapped in together. So if you have somebody that's into bourbon, it's one they should try. It's one that would Absolutely. make sense for them to give a chance mm -hmm. to, I think we're talking somewhere in the seven and a half range is where I'm probably at on this. I, I was, I was my seven. mind, I'm thinking seven and a half to eight. If it hits eight, it's because of affordability. Because yeah, it's only 59 bucks. 59 bucks. And it's a high proof bourbon, but it doesn't knock me down. And, right. you know, and I've said this a million times when you get into the high proofers and the alcohol doesn't overtake you, you're starting to get into some pretty good juice. I think uh, Green River's really putting out some some good juice right now, and I think that's... Because your bad 130 is going to completely yeah. just well, KO just, you alcohol-wise. It, and, and again, it, this is tasting a little... And when I say hot, I don't mean that in a bad way. Today, and maybe it's because it was open yesterday, yesterday it just didn't at all. It is drinking a little hotter today, but still, I mean, it's a good pop, and I love... And it's, you know, it's middle... And then it lingers, and usually a good pop means good finish, and this one has a good finish on it. And then, of course, if it's got caramel mm -hmm. in it, then I'm going to enjoy it. And I think it's delicious as well, but because of the heat, I would give it the 7, because if I'm going to drink it and mm -hmm. if I'm going to buy it, then I like the price point, but I would like something that's not as hot. Mm -hmm. So if it was not as hot, say if it was 105 yeah. or 100, then I think my number would go up. But I agree with y'all. So you'd have been eight and a half yesterday. Yeah. No. You've dropped half no, a point to a point not, on a not day. Not just myself, but myself, Mark Bowell, Josh Bodie, and Aaron all were just boom, really, really good. And I think it's, I still think it's really, really good. I think mm -hmm. it's tasting just a tad bit hotter today, but nothing that turns me off at all. I'll, I'll drink that all day long. Mm -hmm. As you've learned so much about your own palate and you've been testing these beans and doing all these single origin coffees what have you kind of learned about your taste preferences and what you like and just even how to go about go about the process of figuring out what it is you like over the course of these last few years that's a good question so chocolate initially like chocolate oh i want to get that bean it's chocolate 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 cocoa dark chocolate brownie you know there are all these different layers of chocolate and how they taste like my ethiopia um, the Ethiopia that I have, it's more like a baker's cocoa because the Ethiopia is grown in a very climate, in a climate that's very dry. It's a desert. Guatemala, of course, is lush and tropical and lots of rain. So that's why it's more milky chocolate. So that's the difference in the chocolates. And then I think a lot of it has to do with my mood or, you know, I've been drinking the Guatemala for the last two weeks. So I'm going to switch over to the Ethiopia just to kind of change that profile um, but I think for me, I'm looking for things that are distinctly different from everything else I've tasted in the cup, which is why the next coffee we're going to talk about is my Kenya. And I love, 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 love the Kenya because it's more big, bold, and savory is how I describe it. But I don't want big, bold, and savory every day, just like this particular, you know, bourbon. I wouldn't want to drink this Green River every day because it's 130, right? Mm -hmm. That would be like a special evening or I would, of course, put an ice cube in it, but you like the yeah. hotter ones. So well, for a lot all, of people, that isn't every day, but all right, right. I just did a 
about four drops of water in it. Did you? You opened it back up. Oh yeah, yeah. It, so not as this was this was like what I tasted yesterday. So you got to do that. <laughs> so it's tasting. He's getting excited again over here yeah. now. He's starting to pick it up and get pumped up. So and... just get a little water in your in your in your top. Is, uh, you wanna... here you go. Yeah, so just do a little. Put a little on the top. That way you oh, don't there. overload it. Yeah, we need the dropper. I have the dropper I could have brought. No, we There you go. Uh, yesterday, I thought it it muted flavor. Today, I think it's opening it up. It's taking off a little of the heat. Okay. It's because it's hotter yeah. today. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it needs that different. Well, obviously, we're going to buy a case of this later. <laughs> My brother's coming to town in December. He loves his bourbon. Well, that would we gotta, be a good one to do. Yeah, he'd love this. Because he loves them hot. He loves the heat. Mm. It's like caramel. It made corn. it so much sweeter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really opened up the sweetness of it. The the more, even from a fruit note, the sweeter fruits. You're yeah. getting totally different things off of this. But just like I said, four drops of water. It doesn't take much for anybody who's doing this. <laughs> minuscule amounts. Yes. Just a little bit to pop it. Don't pour water in your glass. Uh -huh. That's not what we're saying. No, just use like a half a teaspoon at a time or a quarter teaspoon at a time. That's, That's really good. good. That's really good. good. Where's the Had cream? that been the 130 proof tasting like that, yeah. we're in the eight and a half. Yeah. Right. Because you went, wow, there's no way that's a well, And that's what we did. Literally, four, four guys that have pretty good palates and drink a lot of bourbon all said it was under 110 yesterday. It tastes 105 now. Yeah. yeah and it, do they it, all it normally like... Yeah, no, ones. or they would at least no, recognize it. Yeah. Everything, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Which Steve doesn't necessarily love the hot like I do. He's yeah. more in the weeders. Uh and that's that's gradually that has been changing okay. over a mm -hmm. while. Yeah, I still like some of the good soft ones, but I you get a little more pop. I have moved on. Yeah, you haven't gotten full into the rise. No, but I but I, I like am rise. enjoying rise more these I days. Like it's just to me, it's just getting a good one uh, that's not just so rye dominant. You know, I love mint. Mm -hmm. You know, and you get so much mint out of rise. Mm. Uh, and there's some really good bourbons that are rye heavy out there right now. I want to think in Four Roses, aren't most of their mash bills pretty yeah. pretty rye heavy? You can't go wrong with those. Mm, I like I love everything they do. Oh, absolutely. That was the, the the thing that we tried last week on the show was a very low proof Four Roses. It still had a ton of flavor to it. Um, mm -hmm. It's available in Asia. I think they, I need to be invited to those. Yeah. I mean, shows. hey. We, <laughs> Work, work that out. I might share my secret yeah. stash. There we go. <laughs> well, now we're talking. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to move into the Kenyan uh, here. Uh, okay. While we're doing that, kind of explain, I mean, what is sort of your bourbon history? When did you get into it? What oh is it you gosh. like about bourbon? Um. Okay. So <laughs> one thing I was thinking is, okay, center on this table, we all, in our 20s, we all drank Folgers. Mm -hmm. We all drank... Um, boxed wine and we all drank what's the cheap bourbon um well i shouldn't i shouldn't no that's that. okay okay um we all drank uh um, they're not a sponsor i promise so it's okay fine. Yeah. okay so we all drank a cheap bourbon right okay. and now it's like as you get older you want something that has more complex flavors you want something that has an aroma you want something that you can sit there and talk with your friends um and say "Ooh, what do you taste what do you taste in the cup right what do you taste I love so, this. That's what's that? Just oh, the logo. Oh the, yeah, the logo and the and the bottle. Right thank there. you. Here. This cool. it'll be hot tomorrow morning. Wow. Yes, I will. I won't have. So to you make need one of those, Steve. Take with exactly. me. I was gonna say it. Might, <laughs> it might disappear. <laughs> yeah. I might just give her a whole lot of bourbon, and then, then uh, she's gonna forget yeah. it. Yeah, I'd take that in the car with me, and it'll be good. Like all you know, six hour drive, no problem. <laughs> yeah. so, or you know, the next morning. My my relationship with coffee. This is interesting. It didn't start until I was about thirty three or thirty four really? years old. Really? Yes. Why never, so late? Never drank coffee, and uh, through my previous job, I uh, interacted with some guys from the Middle East uh, that lived in the states now, okay. and uh, they happened to own coffee shops. So. I would oh. meet with them and chat with them and they would bring me coffee okay. and you know, the culture, I can't turn it down. So I started drinking it. They, and then the first time one of them laughed at me cause he saw the look on my face. So he brought me a mocha the next time. Okay. And I'm like, this Did is really? awesome. Oh, yeah, then when I found out how much sugar's in it, right. I'm like, can't do that. Right. But I'll, I'll to this day, never forget my, my parents that came up to visit. And, uh, it's when we were living in Missouri and, 
my dad saw me drinking coffee. He's like, whoa, when did this happen? You know, and it, right. it, it didn't even hit me. You know, he hadn't seen me drinking coffee, but I started drinking coffee. Yeah, 33 or 34 years old. Yeah, I think I started in college. And got hooked on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. but, but in college, I was drinking like, I think it was Denny's or was it Shoney's? I guess in Mississippi, we had Shoney's. Shoney's, yeah. California's yeah. out in Denny's. And so my first coffee really, well, my first coffee was at my mom's house drinking Folgers. Mm -hmm. And it was a percolator coffee. So it's stronger and it's bolder. Um, and it's just a different tasting coffee out of a percolator. Have y'all had percolator coffee? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was my first coffee. Now, you, you didn't give us much. Let me we can that. pour more. Mm. Uh, All right. Now, what do y'all think about this? It is, yeah, again, full disclosure, it's one I've had before. It is strong. I mean, everything that this you is, said it is, it is. Big, it, 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 it's safe. a heavy, this big, is, big right. boy coffee. Not only is this stronger, it's, there's, a to me, a thicker viscosity to yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, more. It's mm. chewier. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's just darker. What do we it call this is, darker? This one I did a medium. I'm looking down at the bag. The I did a medium roast on this one. And I do that just to kind of pull out the bigger. It's a big, bold, savory coffee. This is my favorite of the two. Mm -hmm. I really like because this. Because you like heat and you mm -hmm. like darker coffee. You coffees. like big flavors. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, getting some so dark, I'm getting some dark chocolate mm -hmm. out of this. Yep. I really like this. And it also has like notes of fig. Oh, I shouldn't tell you. No, that's notes fine. Of, I was just about of, to say, I picked up a little fig <laughs> in there. Yeah. Had you said fig, yeah. you know, I would have blown away. Handpicked from the tree. Yes. Fig. Um, but it's, I just roast a little bit darker than, say, the mm -hmm. Guatemala, just because it's from a drier climate. And that bean is, there's, um, there's less moisture in the bean, so it can just stand up to more roasting. Mm -hmm. And I just like to push the, push the needle just a little bit further to make it a little bit bolder in the cup because some people want something that's a big bold savory mm -hmm. whereas the guatemala is like your every day everyone let this is my number one bestseller that guatemala so is this correct somebody's told me before maybe this baristas have told me that uh lighter roast have higher caffeine that is true Yep. And so a lot of people that drink the darker roasted coffees, mm -hmm. it has less caffeine and also has less flavor. So that's why with this Kenya, I don't over roast it. I don't go to second right. crack, as we say, you know, roasting is an artistry. There's art to it and there's chemistry. And so I don't roast the flavor out because mm -hmm. we can still taste those sure. notes. Um, but yeah, the longer you roast it, the less caffeine, the longer you roast it, the less flavor. So Interesting. you're roasting all that away, which is the exact opposite of what most people think they're getting. Oh yeah. They yep. think they it's think, one of the oh, largest misconceptions yeah. out there. Yep. That's what I tell everybody. They so, go dark roast. Yes. I'm going like, to get so much caffeine. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, actually you're getting less. Yeah. I was just doing a cupping two days ago and that was the number one thing I told him. I said, do you realize that when you drink that dark roasted, mm -hmm. you're getting mm -hmm. less caffeine and you're not tasting the flavor notes. From the original plant. Because they're being roasted out of it. Exactly. Interesting. Too Arts. much heat. So you see my big travel mug over there, my Yeti? Yes. If I drink two of those a day in the morning, does that mean I'm addicted to coffee? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Everybody has a different <laughs> level of addiction. And 60 they, ounces does feel a little, <laughs> yeah. a little heavy what's that in way? it? What kind of coffee? Is it Folgers? Is it? No. Okay. I, yeah. I don't think yeah. I've ever had a cup of Folgers yeah. in my life. Yeah. Have you not really? Uh, yeah. And, well, and, you didn't start to your 30s, so you probably were drinking I, specialty coffee from the get-go. Right. No, right. absolutely. Right. Uh, and, but I remember my dad, uh, that's what you know you always had. And, oh, yeah, and I remember him made. at some point going, you're paying $2 for a cup of coffee. Yeah, was, he probably never paid more than 50 cents for a cup or whatever. Right. Uh, this is the, the the Kenyan. Even on a on a day to day coffee, is probably my second favorite of what you do. Um, I think Ethiopia was your number Eth one. Ethiopia's right? my number one. Yeah, yeah it is. We, we don't have a day. You know, place. and I've and I've had Ethiopian at, at different places, right. and I tend to like it. Yeah. And I just remembered. Uh, it's a good medium. It's not too low, but it's not right. popping. Well, anymore. I think it's interesting because it has more. It's, it can be more tea like. Uh -huh. um, one of my customers, he doesn't really like coffee. Supposedly, mm -hmm. he's like, I like tea. I'm like, okay, do the Ethiopia, and then he likes the Ethiopia because it has more tea like notes. Especially if he, um, you know, if I can, I'll do the medium light roast for him, and then it'll be just lighter in flavor. But normally with the Ethiopia, that one also can stand up to roasting it a little bit longer. Not not too much longer, but a You asked earlier, I just remembered Malta. 
uh, when I go to Malta, uh, I get Italian coffees there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And really good. good. stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. good stuff. Uh, probably there in Africa. I've, mm. I've had some really good coffees in Africa. Well, this particular Kenya, the other thing I wanted to mention, it's a micro lot, and that means it's a very special coffee. It's grown in small quantities. It's from one family estate. And so once it's gone, it's gone. You have to wait to the next growing season. And that's the other thing people don't realize um, with coffee is there's a growing season. It's, it's a plant. And so once it's gone, it's gone. And I literally had a customer a week ago call me and say, hey, what about this Guatemala Wee Wee Tenango? When's it going to be available? You know, it's your gold label. Um, and the Wee Wee Tenango is the region where this particular bean comes from. And so she's like, how long is it going to be available? And I said, well, I, I bought ahead, so we're good on that one. We've cut plenty crops. Can I left. see the bag on the other one? Sure. Yeah, it's right there. See, I get heavy cola. It's your third tasting note on this bag, and it's one of the things that I really pick up the most on this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's rich. It's cola-like. Mm. It's, it's chocolate. Yeah. It, it, there, there's a lot here, but yeah. it's all pleasant. There's very little bitterness. Mm -hmm. This is not a bitter it's coffee very at all. No, not at all. And that has to do with the roasting. So you're going to get a bitter coffee if someone over roasts the beans. And every roaster has a different style of roasting. So that really plays a big part. Do you have any idea what type of tasting notes are going to come when you look into a region or a country? Or when you even get the bag or anything? I mean, do you have any idea what's about to pop out? If I, if I look and read, I mean, yeah, you can research any region and say, okay, okay typically from this elevation, you're going to get cocoa or typically if it's a desert you know you're gonna get the cocoa baker's cocoa versus if you go over to guatemala or costa rica you're gonna get more um, rainforest and you're gonna get that milk chocolatey flavor that brownie flavor my other guatemala one of the tasty notes is brownie and that's another thing is i tell people those notes i have on the bag there's about 20 more notes but I can only fit three notes on the bag. So, so it's not might, a three note coffee. No, it's not. You might say, oh, Leslie, I taste apricot in this Guatemala. And that's fine. It's probably in there. And everyone has a different palate, just like drinking the bourbon. We see everyone has a different palate and you taste different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to taste something totally different in the same cup of coffee or in the same cup of bourbon. You're going to taste a different flavor. Right. Just because, you know, of what you... Had that day. I want to know where those crackers came Ooh. from. Do you like those, them? Oh yes. They're you know, delish. I usually I usually cleanse my palate with saltines, but right. you know, they tend to be better. salty. That is better. These are kosher crackers. I don't remember the brand. It's a oh. blue. It's a white and blue box in Good. Kroger in the in the kosher section. I'll have to check that but out. But they're just um. They don't take make your palate do something else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, they keep it neutral. So. We have the Widow Jane de Decadence. Is this the one now? This is the one now. Okay. So we have the Widow Jane Decadence here before you start sipping on it. Um, Widow Jane, really interesting distillery in general, New York. Um, Widow Jane 12 a few years ago was maybe my bottle of the year for, was that 21, Steve? 20, yeah. something like that. Somewhere in there. Uh, they've got some really good stuff. They have some, you know, the Widow Jane 10 is what this originates from. Right. And it is one that... I did not like as much. I thought it was fine. It was mm -hmm. good, but it was not what the twelve was. It was not what some of those were. But um, then again, they took they took that and then they finished it in uh, in maple syrup barrels. We sort of are hit or miss on finishings in general mm -hmm. for bourbons. Not typically the thing that that I prefer when you when you're doing that. I just want the bourbon flavor. Right. But this is one that that really hits it. And we were talking about dessert bourbons, sweet bourbons that have that. A little bit of everything in it. I, I do, and mm. we'll try it here in a second and see what I think today. But in general, it's one that, that I recommend. And I've I never read the back of the label on that one. Uh, it's interesting. But, you know, I've always declared it's my favorite dessert whiskey. Uh, mm. I've picked a couple of barrels mm. that were finished in some different barrels that were good. This one is just to so me, the back just of the, so consistent. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it says, took some of the luxury bourbons, finished them in barrels that held New York's finest artisanal maple syrup from grown maple. The results are rich, creamy, smooth, and slightly sweet mouthful hmm. of whiskey flavor that goes beyond good. It's decadent, as uh, what Jane <laughs> says. I have a maple barrel right now, if you want to throw some bourbon in it. Oh. I just picked it up from Kentucky. Might that's us, another. Might could talk us into that. That's another conversation. Cheers, by the way. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, we missed a clink earlier. That's all right. 
it's heavy sweet on the front and the nose. It's very I mean, sweet. you know exactly what you're getting with this. It's very sweet. I do think it's not as hot. No, not at all. They they, they hit a home run on what they were attempting to do and actually pulling it off. That's what this bourbon really does. It is it is phenomenal at what it is succeeding on what they were trying to do. Mm. I was gonna say this is down your alley, right? Mm -hmm. It's ninety one proof. Oh, perfect. And then get sweetened up. I mean, it oh. is just... Oh, wow. The maple syrup. It's so sharp oh, in the middle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, do they have a bottle of this available at Highcom? Uh, not that we're advertising for them, but... Uh, that oh, wow. Wow. is not on the shelf much. Mm, typically, you gotta, you got to know somebody to grab one for you. Aaron probably, when he gets them in, puts them on the shelf, but they won't last long. Uh, do you know how to get me one of those? We can work, <laughs> we can work on it. We yeah. can work on it. <laughs> I'll trade some you beans. Know, I was going to say, if some, beans, some, beans. If some beans go home with me, then maybe we'll find That's some right. bourbon. It is, it is. A, I mean, wow. the palate is all sweet, wow. all molasses, all syrup. It's, That's, it, you know exactly what you're getting. It's a That's dessert amazing. bourbon. Just let me, you know, mm. I have, I have been out having dinner and if the restaurant oh, wow. or bar has this, this will be my dessert instead of getting cheesecake or chocolate. It's the yeah. perfect after dinner yeah. drink. I'm going to look and see if anyone offers this because, yeah, I would totally choose this over cake or pie. Or over that 130 proof Green River that we just put in front of me a second ago. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, that one would be before dinner, right? This is after dinner because that's really sweet. The maple, the maple comes through. I, I mean, think, I, I think I those... I think that I'm just going to sound weird, but th those two bourbons pair up together pretty good. Like yeah. you said, one of them One's uh, it's good and flavorful, got a really nice pop, which I really enjoy. And then you finish off with a, even though I, I say light, it's still chewy, but mm -hmm. there's no huge pop to it. It's just sweet, flavorful. And it's throughout. It's on the nose, yeah. it's on the palate, and it's on the finish. No, it's, it, and it stays. It's, it's one note, but it's one note in a great yeah. way. It just right. runs all the way through. Right. It's nothing but syrup and molasses and sugar. Mm -hmm. and I'm envisioning putting this in my maple syrup to put on pancakes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> For a, a special ball. Saturday morning. Pour it over a little vanilla ice cream. There you go. It's, it can, it it can serve guess. as the syrup. Hmm. So I'll say this, you know, if you get a chance to snag this, just I think this one maybe retails a hundred. I'm not sure. Oh wow! I'll, yeah, uh, but just it's a little bit higher. Everybody, every you know, people pay that. It's that good. That's uh, right. If you run across it, it's very unique. I wouldn't be afraid to pay one twenty five for it because it's not an everyday sipper. It's mm -hmm. I call it a dessert bourbon. Where do you sort of sit on Widow Jane? Period. See, love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, I have just always loved the 10 year. I think it's just so solid. Yeah, you like, like you it more said, than I do. Like mm -hmm. you said, the 12s and then the lucky 13. Uh, and now the vaults, the 14 and 15s. And of course, now I think you only have lucky 13 in the vault, which is a 15 year. And I still say some of the 12 was some of the best stuff they had in the 14s. It'll be interesting to see now since Heaven Hill bought them out. If there's. Mm changes but i have always really really enjoyed widow jay what is it you're looking for in a dessert bourbon when you're when you're looking when you're at a restaurant you're looking hey i'm gonna have the one drink i mean what what sticks to your eye i i want thick chewy sweet and i want a caramel molasses maple just kind of a thick sweet uh almost like you're uh, having a chocolate pie or a pecan pie or something along that line. What proof would you re uh, look for? I think typically dessert? lower. Okay. I think typically you lower. You don't always go uh, for the 130s. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. But I enjoy some 130s, and I, <laughs> like I said, I love that Green River. Yeah, uh, you know, that's one with a price point. Uh, it'll move pretty quick at our mm -hmm. store because uh, yeah. it's the flavor. Because you're getting a 130 well, for 59 yeah, bucks too. For 59 right. bucks, right. and you know, and so and, and a reason it'd be a good gift is because you know if you if somebody likes the higher proofs, they're oh, going to yeah. love this. But right. at the same time, if you're not a higher proof person, you can still proof this down with a couple of drops of water. That's right. There you go. And you can also proof down the the Kenya coffee. Do we have that bag? You can prove you can put some oh, right. water in that. Like say if you're like, oh, this is too bold for me. This is too you're like big bold. Just you can add a little bit more water to your cup. 
I mean, I've done that. The change of flavors. Yeah, the change oh, of flavors, and to just bring it down so it's not so big bald in your face. All right, so, so I got to use hot water so you're not changing the temperature. I would use hot water. I've got and a couple. Like, I got a couple of coffee like maybe questions a for you. Spoon, a tablespoon, maybe. So, uh, is it better to grind your coffee beans up right before you make your coffee? Yes, it'll be fresher. Yes. I assume that was true. Mm -hmm. I've worked a couple of places uh, overseas where we had big machines, big Italian machines in the office, and they would grind the beans up and then, you know, drip coffee out of it. Right. But I always thought that was a little better. I totally. It's just, it's so much fresher that way. Why are pour overs even better? Oh my gosh. Okay, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> and we could do a whole show on pour overs. Mm -hmm. She loves um, pour overs. I love pour overs. So pour overs, it extracts the flavor out of the ground coffee that you just ground it, mm -hmm. and then it extracts, it's like the cone is, it's cone shaped. It's like a V mm -hmm. all the way around. So you're extracting evenly through all the ground coffee. The flow rate is even, so it's an even extraction of all those delicious flavor notes from the ground coffee into your cup. Mm -hmm. And so you really get a clean cup of coffee with a pour over because of the filter. Whereas with percolator coffee or uh, French press or even drip, you're going to have a little bit more um, particles in your coffee. But with a pour over, you're getting a totally clean cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So you're really tasting, there's no oils, there's no sediment. You're tasting the flavor notes. So yeah. And you can affect if you want a one to 16 ratio. Like I used to drink my coffee one to 12 ratio, which is super strong. Um, kind of like the 130. It's and then finally, I was like, hmm, maybe I should go to more normal, like 116 ratio. But um, what you'll get at, say, a typical breakfast place would be a 1 to 20 ratio. Mm -hmm. But I do mine 1 to 16. That, for me, is a sweet spot because it's a little bit like this This Kenya is a 1 to 16 ratio this morning. So, um, so yeah, so you're getting just a cleaner cup. When you say flavor. 1 to 16, what are the measurements to make 1 to 16? Well, I'm, so it would be 20 grams of the ground coffee to 320 grams, grams of water. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then if you want to switch that up, it'd be about, you know, two to two and a half tablespoons of ground coffee to eight ounces of water. That's the conversion. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For someone who doesn't use grams, like if yeah. you don't have the little cute scale, um, you can do like two to two and a half tablespoons of ground coffee to eight ounces of water. And so the normal coffee pot that you brew in, every little cup on the kettle is actually six ounces per cup. And that's what people don't realize is it's six ounces. So a true mug, like this mug, I think is um, a 12 ounce mug or a 10 ounce mug. And so you just have to think about your ratio. So if you want it stronger, you would add more ground coffee. If you want it thinner, you would add less ground coffee to your Because six ounces is a tease. I never yeah, six that's ounces like of coffee. Yeah. I mean, no, that's, and, yeah. and again, traveling overseas and the little espressos or whatever. Right. And I'm just yeah. that American that wants the big ass cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking at me, shaking their hand. I'm just being polite and just, you know, <laughs> Americano, please. Right. Yeah. But you have a 20 ounce cup. Oh, right. no, I know. Sure. And they're all drinking literally, you know, the little uh, right. sipping and love it. And, right. you know, but it, it's also, you know, in Europe, there's the culture Right. Of meeting in the afternoons for coffee, not necessarily drinks, but meeting for coffee. Yeah, right. Because it's quick. Yeah. And you just knock it back and it gives yeah. you a big bolst of caffeine and you've got your fix for the rest of the day. All right. So yeah. I know that you're actually in the bourbon. You really enjoy good pours. Do you think uh, you're better at picking, picking out notes on coffee or bourbon? Oh, boy. That, I already said my answer. That's obviously. a great That's uh, a great question. You know, my um, mine between... Bourbon, wine, and coffee, it would be bourbon, mm -hmm. wine, and then coffee third. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that, though, is as we've already discovered, I'm drinking it so hot most of the time. Right, you can't taste I'm the I'm missing notes. that. Right. I'll let you think about yeah. it then, Chase. You, yeah. what's your order there? I'm just now in a very infancy of trying to pick them out in, in, in coffee. I mean, mm -hmm. Leslie calls that for me to even consider that that was a thing, if I'm honest. I mean, right. I'm just kind of like you. Just give me the hot coffee, and I'm not really considering it. And I knew the... The overall profile of what I wanted, but I didn't think, oh, it's because I like chocolate or cherry or dried fruit or fig or anything like that. Yeah. It did not exist. Mm -hmm. I, I think actually wine is my worst one. I know what wines I like and I know that I want this and I can explain, hey, I want a Chardonnay that does this or a Cabernet that right. does this. 
But as far as the individual notes, it, it, it's bourbon, coffee, wine, for mm -hmm. sure. I, I think I do pick start to pick up things in coffee, mm -hmm. but it's just from learning and, and tutelage in that standpoint. And then right. in, in, in bourbons, I have a hard time on my nose. I don't have a great nose, but I do feel like memory kicks in pretty good in the in, in the mm -hmm. mid palate as I'm as I'm as I'm drinking it. Right. I would have to say coffee, okay. bourbon, and wine. Right. And lately. Like the last couple of years, I just don't drink a lot of wine. So I've kind of gotten further away from it. And I like drier wines now. And I don't like the sweet wines at mm -hmm. all anymore. Do you drink much wine, Sue? Uh, some. I, I, I keep some uh, at the house. And I tend to with work on occasion. It's just when I'm overseas working and we're doing things and having dinners. So I'm going to drink some wine as everybody else is Red or white? Mo mostly red. Some whites. Uh, was in Austria early this year. Awesome, good, mm. good wine country there. Uh, That's amazing. Belgium was a you know beer place. Oh That's my right. gosh, I've never seen. I, I literally went into a bar that had two thousand, over two thousand oh beers. How do they sell them? Like, how do you even produce enough to keep margins? Yeah, where they should yeah, be well, you know, but I mean, they're, I mean, it's just just they're selling every Belgian beer there is and everything else, and uh, and, and it's, it's canned and it's just ready. Oh no, there. a ton of it's draft. I mean, oh, really? but that is a beer country. So in Belgium, it's you, what they you, drink. You cannot step five yards without a, a huge uh, beer uh, place, a huge bar, uh, beer, uh, chocolate store. Oh, I love chocolate. And then that's fruits, Belgian fries. Mm. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. One thing we talk about, and I, I know, Leslie, you and I discussed this on the podcast we did the last time, was, you know, tasting with food and how that changes mm -hmm. flavors. You know, you have chocolates. We talked about tons of chocolates mm -hmm. that completely alter the flavor of coffee. Right, right. That works the same way with bourbon, too. I mean, uh, right. Steve and I, I mean, most people listening, sports writer of a message board, they... There's, there's a guy on there that always talks about the cakes. You know, mm -hmm. there's a strawberry cake that he pairs the one bourbon with. Oh, he whatnot. pairs it. I figured out who it is. Yeah. It's Tom Nolan. Yes. Uh, and I've actually, we've chatted back and forth before. And he loves uh, some of those really high-end Four Roses barrel picks with the strawberry cake. Yeah, he does sugary strawberry cake. Yeah. With so we're going to have to. very sweet. We're going to have to do that sometime. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, if you're having coffee or having what, whatever this is, try some foods. Try some right. things. Mm -hmm. Not just hey, I'm doing it with bacon and eggs in my breakfast, but yeah. really be strategic about ways that it will completely alter the taste of the coffee or the bourbon right. you have. Oh, yeah, no, no. I mean, so, yeah. so if, right, I mean, if, if I, I can't eat it every day, but I wish I could, but like a good chocolate croissant or some right. kind of Danish with coffee in the morning, right. oh, my gosh. I usually give myself that one treat one day over the weekend. Well, um, and even if you look at the Keiko bar, 77%, 60%, 50%, all the different levels of actual cocoa or cacao in the bar versus the sugar, that's going to affect it too. So a Danish uh, chocolate croissant has a lot more sugar content, so it's going to make that Kenya or make the Guatemala taste sweeter in the cup because you've got that sugar. And it is the balance. If you it's have a, a really high sugar content, pick something that's a little bolder, that's right. a little lesser, that's right. a little lighter, not lighter, but less sugar mm -hmm. content in that way. That's all right. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that's the one thing that I don't know that I mean, we'll do full shows on this as we go, but we have mm -hmm. not discussed kind of the ways that the food will interact. It's why we like these crackers right here is that right. it didn't even have the salt that changed the way some of the bourbon and some of the things we're tasting as we mm -hmm. as we went through it at that point. So mm -hmm. that was yeah. that, that was kind of fascinating. You know, you know, we're both pretty good friends with a certain chef up in Memphis, Tennessee, that I bet we could get on the show sometime. We'll start working and, on and pair some uh, yeah, uh, bourbon some. and some food. There you go. I'm sure there's good bourbons that would pair really well with some bread puddings and things like oh, that. Oh, yes, sir. And you can marinate steaks with coffee, ground coffee. Uh, I've got a buddy in Fredericksburg, uh, Virginia, that makes, and I was shamefully admitted it, that, uh, and Phil Fan, if you're listening, I've already told you you're the winner. He makes, he grills a better steak than I do. And I never thought I would say that. Pretty proud mm. of my steaks. My kids love my steaks. He has a coffee rub. Oh, yeah. It's a coffee rub and then a cowboy rub. And, and he does a uh, oh, gravity-fed smoker. And then oh, he'll wow. sear them uh, on a you know, Weber 600 and it's the best. Ready to go. And, it's, and the coffee. Yeah, uh, it makes a difference. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. On the crust is so good. Now I'm, I'm working on a coffee rub right now. 
what are you looking for with it? What's the goal? Like, what 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 kind of profile or what? How do you take a certain kind of coffee to turn it right. into a rub? So I was thinking about using my Kenya because it's big, bold, and savory, and then pairing it with some uh, smoky paprika, which is my favorite, and of course some salt and garlic and onion and some other spices. I'm just still playing with it right now, but smoky paprika will definitely be in that profile. So the Guatemalan is your best seller, you said? Is that that right? is, yeah. Both of my Guatemalas. And, you know, I have one, I have like a list of my top thousand customers. And there's a guy, luckily, he knows who he is. He's in my top five. And, uh, yeah, he it's funny because he started out with the other Guatemala, the uh, brown label. Yes. It's from uh, Baja Verapaz. And so he started out that one. And now this is his favorite. So, um, no, just, no, he started out, this is his favorite. Then he's now on the on the brown label. The Baja Verapaz. So it's interesting, but the two Guatemalas are top favorites. Of course, Ethiopia is another favorite. I just did a cupping with a company three days ago, and they all gravitated toward the Ethiopia. But they were all seasoned coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. They weren't newbies, and so they knew what they were tasting. And so they liked that big, bold um, flavors of the, the drier cocoa, you know, the baker's cocoa and the dried fruit flavors coming out in that Ethiopia. So, yeah. It's um, that's why I keep offering the Ethiopia from Gucci because people just love that one too. So people listening, pick it up. I know locally, but then online as well. Where yeah. can we find the coffee? Yeah, locally you can find it at Chicory Market and on the Square at Oxford Creamery, and of course VelvetDitchCoffee.com. I've got people all over the country that order. Can't do without it. Steve, uh, we appreciate Aaron and uh, the, the bottle pick, obviously, from uh, Green River there for uh, for that one. Again, 59 bucks. Is that, was that what we're going I think at? that's right. Aaron, don't shoot me if I'm wrong on that. I think that's what he said retail was on it. Okay, I hope around, so. Around 59 bucks, 130 proof bourbon there for you for uh, a good price point and sure. actually has some flavors despite the age. So yeah. it's, it, 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 it's worth it. Like I said, it was the one thing that... I picked up from it was the barrel pick and then of course if you come across the widow jane decadence it's, it's worth it just to put on the shelf and to have and to have it for dessert let people try it, it, it it's it's one of the more unique bourbons that you will find you know we'll, we'll probably do some shows here soon on putting a bar together how yeah. you go about it what you <laughs> would do fun. and if you were just simply going hey we need some for desserts and after dinners it would be one of the top two or three picks so so <laughs> one of our former uh Bourbon Club members uh, moved back to Atlanta, his family, and uh, he can usually run into these for 99 bucks in a store over there, so he has standing orders just to oh, grab, wow. grab me one when he sees it. That's nice. Uh, well, and so all day long. I like to always have one of these uh, on the bar at the house. Widow Jane Decadence, Green River, and then, of course, Velvet Ditch Coffee, the Guatemalan, and the Kenyan today. We've been telling you guys... Appreciate you watching the video. It made more sense for the way we were doing some of these tastings. So if you're just listening to podcast form, go find certain parts. Check that on YouTube, MPW Digital, for that. Here with you every single week with Bourbon South. Got some cool stuff coming up, including maybe some opportunity to get involved for something that uh, is quite neat that is right down the uh, the pipe and pretty soon as well. So as always, appreciate you guys. Leslie, thanks for uh, Thank you. joining Thank us. You. And then for Steve and I. We're hopefully uh, chickening with us every single week. So cheers, good pours, and we'll talk to you again cheers. next week.